All right, sorry about that, boo. Somebody called me and uh, it cut off the video. Okay, so let me just wrap this video up by saying there was a fruity cutie on my call last night uh, on the private community last night and she just made such a great point and I wanted to share it with you guys, okay? So, um, in a world full of good, better, and best, always do your best. Now, this fruity cutie, she was craving french fries. She really wanted Wendy's french fries, okay? Instead, she had a salad, and the dressing did have oil and salt in it. And it's not something that is ideal, right? Like oil and salt, it's very addicting. But you're, if you're eating that on a salad, then you gotta, boo, you gotta give yourself some goddamn credit. You gotta give yourself some grace. If you wanted french fries, but you're eating oil and salt on a salad, you gotta, give yourself a standing ovation and you got to feel really really good about that okay don't try to eat just fruit don't try to just eliminate everything that you want if you're craving a dressing if you want to make dressing with oil and salt in it then do it do it boo i don't promote it i don't eat that but you know i was eating oil and salt for the first many many years of being raw right like you're not talking to somebody who just went raw i went raw in 2011 so don't compare your diet to my diet. Right now, I do not consume oil or salt. I don't find them to be health foods. But if, if you give me an option between french fries and a salad with oil and salt, you better believe I'm going for the salad with oil and salt. And that's, if that's what you're needing right now, then do it. Because you know you don't need those french fries, but you do know you need a salad in you. You know that, okay? So just... Do your best and make it very, very easy for yourself to succeed. If, if the only way that you can enjoy eating raw right now is to have salt in your dressings, then have salt in your dressings. I recommend Himalayan pink salt, but have any type of salt you want. If that's going to help you stay raw, do it, boo. Don't be miserable on the raw food diet. And this is really what I try to talk about in both the raw vegan excuses part one and part two available in the bundle. Check out that bundle, y'all, because it's so worth it. Excuses Part 2 is honestly my favorite book that I've ever written so far. I have written over 10 books. I just haven't published them all yet. They're ebooks, but, um, you know, I have like meal plans and recipe books and stuff like that, but I'm slowly publishing them all on Amazon myself, self-publishing, okay? And if you'd like to publish your own books, I do have a YouTube on that that nobody watched, but um, long story short is that uh, in the books, I talk about the number one way to make it possible to go raw and that is to make it very easy okay so the whole book is filled with tips and tricks on how you can actually make it easier for yourself to go raw and there's also lots of recipes lots of really fun easy recipes and there's also um a really important message in the books which is not one type of raw diet is going to be for everyone so there's four types of people. If I could find the page right now, I will. I think it's in the first book, actually. There's four types of people that want to go raw. Oh, here we go. I found it. Okay. This is cool. I'm so happy I found it. Um, so, again, this is Raw Vegan Excuses Part 1. And the chapter is Chapter 8, I Keep Falling Off. Okay, the excuse is I Keep Falling Off. Um, and uh, I start the book the chapter by saying if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid Albert Einstein okay you see there's nothing wrong with you you're just doing it in a way that doesn't work for you okay the four types of people that want to go raw all right number one the first type you enjoy variety but you hate making food Okay, the second type of person is you enjoy variety and you're passionate about preparing and experimenting in the kitchen. The third type of person is you aspire to be raw, but you love cooking and you love warm cooked food. Okay, and the fourth type of person is you prefer simplicity, you don't like change, and you thrive on routine. That's me. I'm the fourth type of person. So like I can eat watermelon every day for the rest of my life. I can literally have the same dressing every day for the rest of my life, okay? Like, I can have the same salad and the same dressing. You know, maybe one day I'll get tired of it, but I mean, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take weeks, okay? I'm a creature of habit. I don't need a lot of variety. But I, through, you know, 
coaching people for the past few years and through meeting thousands of raw vegans, I've noticed these are the four types of people that are on a raw food diet. So then what you do from that is, okay, you, um, hold on. Do I have it? Yeah, I have it in the chapter, but I also have it in the summary. You tailor your strategy for success, okay? You identify your raw personality, and then you tailor your strategy for maintaining a raw food diet. So type one is the person that loves variety but hates to make food. So what you're going to do is you're going to consider a meal delivery service or maybe hire someone to prepare raw meals for you. And this doesn't mean you have to be a millionaire. There are actually many people online that make raw gourmet food and can ship it to your house. Okay, I know that uh, my friend Olivia Herzog, she used to do that. I know actually um, one of my managers from Woodstock Fruit Festival, her name is Rachel, she does that. She makes cinnamon rolls, she makes wraps, she makes all these raw gourmet stuff. She puts it in the mail, you get it in a day, okay? And it's not expensive. So. Think outside the box. Look outside the box for opportunities and alternatives to making your own raw gourmet food. Or if you absolutely don't want to do that, okay, invest time on just Sunday, one day a week. Invest time to make creative gourmet raw food to add to your meals throughout the week, okay? Spend a few hours on Sundays making the cinnamon rolls, making the brownies, making the raw vegan wraps, okay? One day a week. You can do it. Trust me. All right, and involve other people. You know, get you know, in, get your kids involved, get your friends involved. All right, um, you know, you can even listen. <laughs> you got to get creative, okay? You can even hire someone to help you. All right, you know, a high schooler. You know, pay them ten dollars an hour, twenty dollars an hour, whatever you can afford. All right, type two, hire your kids. Okay, they want to make some money. Type two. Focus on maintaining a raw. So the type two is the person that enjoys variety and loves to make food. Okay. Focus on maintaining a fruit-based diet for sufficient calories while enjoying creativity in the kitchen as much as you can. The reason I say this is because I know a lot of clients that love to make food and they love to make beautiful dishes, beautiful gourmet raw food, but that food that they're making, it doesn't contain a lot of calories, right? They like to make beautiful dishes, but they're very small portions. And that's not going to help you stay raw. Okay, so you got to make, make sure you're eating enough fruit to sustain you and then make your beautiful raw gourmet meals as well. Okay, but fruit has to be the basis of your diet and then you can also enjoy creating stuff in the kitchen too. Uh, you also don't want to eat too much dehydrated foods. It's going to make you dehydrated. All right, type number three. We're almost done, I promise. Type number three is you aspire to be raw, but you love cooked food. You love warm food. I would recommend you embrace a high raw vegan diet just for now, boo, because here's the thing. It's not all or nothing. It's not 100% or your 0%, okay? Get rid of that. Get rid of that approach, okay? Allow yourself to have some warm cooked food without compromising your health. So I'm talking about baked or steamed fruit or vegetables, baked bananas, baked plantains, baked apples, steamed broccoli, steamed carrots, baked zucchini, sauteed mushrooms. You understand what I'm saying, right? Fruit and vegetables that you can eat raw, but cook them. Okay, that's that's the healthiest raw, the healthiest cooked food that you can make is food that you can eat raw, but you're cooking it with wet heat. So steaming it or sauteing it or, um, uh, what's the other thing people do? Uh, pressure cooking it. Wet heat, okay? Add cooked food to a, a salad. Never, never replace raw foods with cooked foods. Always have healthy cooked foods in addition to and with raw food, okay? That's the way you're going to heal and you're going to be healthy and you're going to lose weight, okay? And then the fourth type of person is me, okay? And that's the person who loves simplicity. I don't like change and I really like routine, okay? So this person... I want you to prioritize simplicity and routine, emphasizing mono meals and very simple but delicious delicious dressings and dips and nice creams and smoothie bowls and smoothies if desired, okay? And so we go more into that in the book. But um, definitely, I would recommend you check out the plant-based bundle because not only will you get um, my brand new book, Raw Vegan Excuses 2, but you're also going to get into the running to win all five of my books straight to your house and um yeah 
I think you'll really enjoy them. I know that I'm really proud of them, honestly, and I'm really grateful to everyone that has already bought the bundle with my link. You are in the running, and I'm really, really excited to announce the winner live on YouTube at 9 a.m. on Monday, July, I think that's the 15th. Love you, my boo, and I will see you in the next episode. Check out the link below, and don't forget, if you want to be cute, now listen, you got to eat fruit. I'll see you soon, boo. Bye.